Hey everyone, I hope you're having a nice day so far. I really wanted to get this build out there before they completely changed Veteran, but I was a day late. Somehow though, I managed to adjust what I was initially going to go for, and I found a way to make it work just as good. A lot of the builds I love to make are preserved around keeping the team alive and supporting everyone I can. And the Veteran has the best talent tree for doing just that. I created an absolute unit of a Guardsman that just thrives on high damage and killing every threat on the field while also pushing your team forward with really no issues. So enjoy the footage of the Damnation Maelstrom repair mission I have, and let's talk about how this build can easily carry you through some of the tougher missions Darktide has to offer. First off, let's talk about the loadout. As my primary weapon, I'm bringing the Assault Chainsword with me, and I've rolled it to have more damage towards unarmored and carapist armored enemies, since tearing through any elites and specials that are alone could prove very useful if needed. As for my blessings, I really like having Savage Sweep for the cleave bonus, and Rampage for the damage increase. Although you can absolutely throw Shred on there instead of Rampage if you want. They're both going to grant you a decent buff for horde clearing, and that's exactly what we're going to be using this weapon for. As for my secondary, I have the plasma gun. I have ranged critical hit damage and damage to unyielding enemies as my perks. As for my blessings, I really enjoyed using Blaze Away for the consistent damage increase whenever I didn't have time to charge my plasma gun. With the damage increase, you can actually kill rows of enemies in a couple shots, and with Gits Hot, you can actually scale your crit chance as the weapon's heat level rises. Keeping the weapon's heat level high will actually output even more damage when you're spamming shots. I also tested out a couple other weapons, but this one left me most satisfied since you can hit through breakpoints easily and demolish droves of elites with ease. Not to mention, since this was a maelstrom mission, we had lots of monstrosities spawning in. And although they were weakened, it actually took around 5 shots for me to kill them with the new keystone ability proct. As for the curios, I went with 1 for toughness and 2 for max health. All of them have boost matched to their respective blessings, as well as stamina regen for movement and defense, and combat ability regen for minimizing our cooldown so we can spam our main ability. Speaking of abilities, let me show you the talent tree really quick, and we can discuss how to effectively keep your team alive and output a ton of damage at the same time. Originally, I had a support veteran build that I really wanted to show off today, but instead I managed to piece together a build that utilized similar passives and gave me the same results. To support our team, we're going to utilize Voice of Command. This will replenish any toughness for our team as well as stagger any threats within melee range. And this ability can be spammed against all encounters, especially monstrosities. Keeping your team engaged is your main job with this build. This is the most important ability we have, and with a low cooldown, we can focus on giving everyone constant buffs. For the ability modifiers, we want to take Duty and Honor. This will give everyone an additional 50% toughness overcharge for 15 seconds. On top of that, we also want to take For the Emperor. This will give us a 10% melee and ranged base damage increase for each time that we activate our ability. Both of these are supportive and give buffs to the entire team. As for my Blitz, I went with Shred Grenades since I already have ways to take down Crushers and Bulwarks with my Plasma Gun, but if you want to take Crack Grenades, you can absolutely swap since there's no node blocking your path. Our Aura ability is going to be Survivalist for the Ammo Replenishment for all Elite and Specialist enemies killed for the entire team. Next, let's talk about the Keystone ability I chose and why. Since I play on PC, tagging for me is pretty easy. In fact, I tag about every target that I see that's a threat. So when I saw Focus Target, I knew it was something I could utilize in my favor. With focus target, we gain a stack every 2 seconds, up to 5 stacks. Tagging any enemy applies a specific tag over the enemy, and they take a 4% additional damage with each stack applied. With the modifiers, we can actually increase our support abilities even more. Focus fire grants us up to 8 stacks of focus target, pushing our damage up to 32% at full stacks. Redirect fire gives us an additional 1.5% damage increase for every stack of focus target that I apply to a target that is killed. This will spread out to the entire team that's in Coherency and last 10 seconds. And lastly, Target Down gives everyone in Coherency 5% Toughness Replenishment and 5% Stamina for each stack applied to a target that is killed. These abilities incentivize the team to kill the target that I ping because of the buffs that they'll all receive. Now, let's talk about the passives that will enhance our team composition. I chose Born Leader for the 15% Toughness Replenishment for my team whenever I replenish Toughness. Keeping active and taking down targets is what I'm good at, so why not spread the wealth? I took Bring It Down for the 20% damage to Ogrins and Monstrosities, making the Plasma Gun even stronger. Charismatic grants us a wider radius for our aura to make sure we get all the ammo replenishment we need. Close Order Drill is awesome for survivability, especially when everyone is in Coherency. The 33% toughness damage reduction is great, especially when things look dicey. Covering Fire gives all allies within 5 meters 15% toughness replenishment and a 10% base damage increase for 3 seconds. This could be a huge game changer if someone's getting backed up into a corner and just needs a single hit to get out of danger. Demolition Stockpile is usually a must pick for me on any vet build since I like not having to look for grenades, plus I like to spam whenever I want to. I chose Exhilarating Takedown for the 15% toughness replenishment and the plus 10% to our toughness damage reduction on any ranged weak spot kill. 
This can stack up to three times and is easily attainable with the plasma gun, especially since the wide output of the shot should cleave through most targets weak spots. Get back in the fight was another easy pick for me because I hate being stunned and slowed down by gunfire. This mix with voice of command allows us to push up to melee range in some engagements. With the immunity lasting up to 6 seconds, we can get to our target easily once we route it, not to mention we gain half the amount of stamina back once we lose all of our toughness. This allows us to block any incoming melee damage and opens our follow up attack more easily. The passive iron will is just a better version of any toughness damage reduction that we already have, giving us plus 50% reduced toughness damage whenever we are above 75% toughness, and we should be above that with all of our abilities. Longshot is a passive perk that I took purely for sniping with our plasma gun. If I can see the target in the distance, a charged shot or two will normally kill it because of the plus 20% range damage buff that we get. And with rending strikes, my chainsword and plasma gun gain 10% rending, making it much easier to chew through armored enemies. And lastly, my favorite passive in this build is tactical awareness. With any specialist enemy that we kill, our combat ability cooldown goes down by 6 seconds. 6 whole seconds. So set your eyes on all the specialists and unload your plasma gun with extreme prejudice. For my operative modifiers, we gain boost to health and toughness along with some damage reduction. But best of all, we gain toughness replenishment for the entire team, boosting all of our passives a little bit more. The range damage and reload speed boosts are great too, and whenever we spray into the horde, we also apply our suppression boost to them as well. This build has gotten me through multiple orc damnations already, and the build that I was planning to show off before patch 15 dropped is almost identical to this one. Ideally though, you want a team that's going to play close to you. You want to play in numbers and work through every problem together as a team. With this build, it'll be very difficult for anyone to really be put down. Just gauge the threats as they come in and try your best to relieve the team when you can. I watch over the team's toughness bar like a hawk, and whenever I see someone in trouble, I try to rush to their aid. Try to be the best support you can be. In the game that you're watching, we were actually down to man the entire game. We had a bot that was shooting pox bursters and was causing more harm than good. This build got me through the worst this game could throw at me so far, and it was incredibly rewarding to know that I was being depended on. Anyways, I'm going to go work on my next build, but until next time, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of this crazy match.
Kindred! 